Hey there, it's Rob Knight, and uh, I've had a few questions this week about using Lightroom, and uh, specifically with Olympus RAW files. And I've answered the same question a couple of times, so I'm going to go ahead and make a video for the benefit of my clients and for you. Um, this is going to be about using Olympus RAW files and how to set up Lightroom so that when you import your Olympus files into Lightroom, you're going to get the best quality that you can get out of those files. I've uh, been talking to a lot of people lately about different applications that uh, that handle the raw files better or worse or uh, other options for processing raw files. But in my experience, I've been using Lightroom since it was a public beta and uh, my workflow is ingrained in Lightroom. Like Lightroom is part of what I do with every picture and I love it and I know it like the back of my hand and all the adjustments and all the tools are just second nature to me. So for me to then go and try to learn a new software package to try to get little gains, it's a daunting task, right? It's a scary thing to think about. Am I going to need to use different software to make the most of these files? And uh, in my experience, the answer to that is pretty much no. And there's a couple of things that I've done to maximize the quality for my Olympus RAW file so that the, the second I open that picture in Lightroom, it already has some defaults laid out uh, that are like I want to do to every picture. So that saves me time and I can continue to use the software that I'm comfortable with and familiar with. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to profile your camera. And in my experience, profiling the really every camera, but my Olympus cameras has, uh, it's gotten me the most dynamic range, the most accurate color and the best quality raw file to begin with, because the, I'm going to be using the x right color checker passport and the camera calibration software from x right to actually profile my specific camera. Now, not just any Olympus camera, not a generic profile that looks sort of like an Olympus camera, but the Passport allows you to calibrate your specific sensor in your specific camera. And in my experience, you get better dynamic range, more detail in the shadows, less noise even. There's so many gains from doing this. It's totally worth the 99 bucks or whatever it costs for the Passport. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you that, how to use the Passport. Uh, how to use the software inside of Lightroom. And then I'm going to show you how to save your default settings in Lightroom so that your, uh, your raw files will be as good as they can get out of the box. For some reason, Adobe decided to make it harder to set the default settings. It used to be just a matter of clicking the set default settings uh, button in the menu. And now there's a couple of steps that we have to do. So it's not hard. It's just a couple of steps. And I'm going to show you all that right now. So this image here is uh, the color checker passport from x right This is uh, a shot outside in uh, open shade. So really you want the, the light to be even, you want the exposure to be right when you shoot this color checker and you import this picture into Lightroom, be sure you do a raw file. Uh, you're gonna take the raw file in developer, the library module, right click on it and you go to export and you will see the color checker camera calibration option for export. This is automatically installed when you uh, install the color checker camera calibration software. So you just click there, give your profile a name. I usually name mine the name of the camera that I'm using. So it might be uh, EM1X profiled and maybe sunlight, okay? And then I'm going to hit save. I'm not going to do that right now because I already have uh, profiles made for this camera, but you hit that, you're going to see the progress bar run here as it builds your profile. So once the profile is finished, you'll see a pop-up window that will tell you to quit Lightroom and restart it in order to use the new profile. We've already done this. The profile's already created and I've already quit and restart Lightroom. So I'm going to show you where to find that profile to begin with. I'm going to go to uh, an image here and I'm going to go to the develop module and the basic panel. The top item in the basic panel is profile. And by default, you'll see that it is Adobe color. And we need to go and find that profile because if we just click this drop down, this drop down is only going to contain the profiles that you've saved as favorites. So we're going to hit this little window pane looking icon here to go to the list of your profiles that are installed. We're going to go past Adobe Raw. 
We're going to go past camera matching and we're going to go to profiles. And once you create a profile with the color checker software, then you will see your uh, profiles that you've created in this list. So I'm going to go ahead. You'll see I've got a star by a few of these. Go ahead and hit the favorites button on there. Uh, that adds it to this list that you can drop down at the top of the, uh, of the panel. So I'm going to choose the, uh, this particular profile and hit close. So now I'm going to show you the difference really quickly between Adobe Color. If you look at the image, there's Adobe Color, and here's my calibrated uh, profile. And I'm going to show you a little bit closer too. There's Adobe Color. Um, this image in particular strikes me because Adobe thinks, well, this just white up here. It's, it's kind of off white. But then when you get into the profile, the calibrated profile, there's so many different tones. There's such a range of tonality, even within that off white area. Uh, that's where you get these, these benefits. This calibrated profile allows the Adobe software or whatever uh, raw software you're using to process the raw file and get the most information out of your particular camera sensor. So that's great. So that's the first thing that we're going to do is set that profile. Now I'm going to set two other parameters and then I'm going to save this as a preset and I'm going to make this my default settings in Lightroom. So I'm going to hit command five to go to the detail panel in the develop module. And you'll see the default sharpening in uh, Lightroom for your Olympus files is going to be at 20 and your default noise reduction is at zero. I, I've had several clients over the year that years that tell me that you know they didn't have any noise in their Canon or Nikon files, but they do in their Olympus files. Well, Canon and Nikon files have built-in noise reduction in Lightroom. This this slider is already moved by default with Canons and Nikons. I, I don't know about Sony because I've never had a Sony camera, but uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is put that noise reduction at 20. And then I'm going to go up here for sharpening and I'm going to make that 50. This is just from my experience in Lightroom. This is, uh, these are the settings that I found myself usually going to. Um, so these are my default settings, right? The, the sharpening at 50 and the luminance noise reduction at 20. I use this for, for pictures at ISO 3200, at 6400, at 1600. Uh, this image in particular is at ISO 800, and uh, I'll show you the before here. Uh, if you watch the little monkey's face there, there's the before and the after. Um, that gives me, uh, the if there is any grain in the shadows, that 20 in the uh, luminous noise reduction gets rid of that, or at least makes it uh, a little more manageable. And the sharpening brings back the, any detail that you might have lost with the noise reduction and, uh, and makes it nice and crisp. The next step in making this our default is to make a preset using these settings. So I'm going to go to the other side, uh, the left hand side of the panels in the develop module, and I'm going to click the plus button in the presets panel. And I'm going to say create a preset. I'm going to call this EM1X default. You will choose a name that has to do with the camera that you're saving a preset for. And you'll want to do this with every different camera that you have. For example, I use the EM1 Mark II, the EM1 Mark III, and the EM1X, among others. So I'm going to have a different preset for each one of those cameras because Lightroom knows to use different settings. Uh, you can save different default settings for each camera. Since I'm going to have to profile all my different cameras, then I'm going to need a different preset for each camera. Okay, so We'll call this EM1X default. I'm gonna hey, say check none here. The only thing I'm gonna save is the treatment and profile. I'm gonna check the noise reduction and the sharpening. Okay, those are the only settings that we changed, right? The profile, the noise reduction and the sharpening. And then I'm gonna save it under user presets and hit create. Now there's one more step to make these the default settings for this particular camera. I'm going to go uh, on the Mac. I'm going to go under the Lightroom Classic menu on the PC. I'm pretty sure it's the Edit menu, but we're going to find the Preferences. Okay, here in the Preferences panel, I'm going to open the Presets tab. And by default, you're going to see this. This Your raw defaults is going to say Adobe Default. That makes sense, right? So what we're going to do is click on this menu, go down to Preset. Right, we just created a preset. So we're gonna to go to our user presets and select the one that we just made. We're gonna say EM1 color checker plus sharpening 
Now, every, every raw file that comes into Lightroom is going to have those as my default settings. That's pretty cool, right? That's all you have to do. There's no save to this. There's no nothing. You just close that window. That's going to be your default settings. If you have more than one camera, you're going to click this button, override master setting for specific cameras. Now I'm going to go down here to my list. This lists all the cameras that I've imported photos from inside of Lightroom. So I'm going to choose in this case, the EM1 Mark III, right? My master is the EM1X default. So for the EM1 Mark III, I'm going to go down here and choose a different preset that I've created for that camera, the EM1 Mark III plus sharpening. Now you can see the list here. The EM1 Mark III gets that particular profile. The EM1X gets that particular profile and so on with whatever different cameras you have. Okay. So we're going to change our settings. We're going to save a preset and then we're going to change those presets as our default in the preferences. If that doesn't make any sense to you, drop me an email, send me a comment. Um, I'd be glad to help you out with this for, uh, for you guys, for Bill and Bob. I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, you know where to find me. So, uh, you can reach me at Rob at robnightphotography.com and I'll see you next time.